Hello and welcome to our first official winter forecast of 2023 to 2024. I cannot believe I'm saying that after all these years of making these videos, we are now making it towards 2024. Unbelievable stuff. I am so excited to be here with you guys as this is the most exciting video of the entire year for me to make. I wanted to let you know before we kind of just get into things, we're gonna be going over the precipitation, temperatures, overall forecast, it's gonna be so exciting. I wanna let you know that all of these maps were used by our or our trilogy maps maps so you can check those out in the description and pin comment down below to make maps just like these they are 16k absolutely massive the highest definition most customizable maps anywhere on the internet and also i want to highly recommend that you check out our prestige weather weather consulting it's five dollars a month we're doing one call per week for now uh consulting call that is uh, so that you guys can talk one-on-one -on -one with our weather team and get an, a detailed forecast, basically, where you can ask any questions you want. It's really, really cool. I recommend checking that out, but I don't want to be too long-winded here. Let's just get right into things. And as you can see, we're taking a look at our precipitation forecast. There is some important context to go over. We are in an El Nino after we've just been in a three-year La Nina. So most of my channel's history has been during this La Nina, so keep that in mind. We have been in a very, very long La Nina, so this is going to be a very different winter uh, in many different ways. This is going to be the first El Nino in so long. And the biggest difference here is that in La Nina's, we would typically see a storm track like something like this and bring a lot of precipitation to these areas. Well, this valve gets shut off during El Nino's. And as you can see, this is actually exactly where we expect below average precipitation to occur. So yes, very, very opposite of what we've been already dealing with. Uh, as you can see, as we just add a layer here, we do have more confidence in this region because this is an area that typically in La Nina sees the most precipitation. And in El Nino's, this is the area that sees the most decreased amount of precipitation, this Pacific Northwest region. So Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, Nevada, all of these areas are gonna be the areas where we expect to really, really see a dramatic uh, dryness compared to what we've seen again the past three winters in a row so a huge change here from what we've been experiencing for so many years i want to just get into the above average precipitation and some good news down here above average precipitation down here for california nevada arizona and new mexico in, in El Nino, we typically see more of a, a kind of southwest storm track that eventually heads eastward. We'll talk about that in a minute. But we see the storms typically move in through this area and not this area here. They get kind of blocked out from heading northward. So they're forced further southward, and we see them move in through the southwest here. This is very, very typical El Nino type stuff. Uh, and this is a lot of what we've seen the models suggesting, the long-range models and our analogs. So everything is lined up just like this everything is leading me to believe that this is what the west is going to look like we even have a second layer here of that precipitation and as you can see this is where we're even more confident in the above average precipitation these areas it does not take a lot of precipitation to bring us into the above average amount uh, because they don't average a lot of of, of rain or snow uh, that much for most of these areas so to see consistent storms is going to be pretty easy to bring these areas into the above average category so that that is why I think that they will easily cross into the above average precipitation um, this year. Now we do have another area where we expect the above average precipitation to occur and it's because again we see the storms move through the southwest like this but we also see these nor'easters like the setup in this area here so a lot of storms moving through this pocket um, and this can look many different ways we could see some inland storms depending on the jet stream pattern these would bring snowfall to a lot of these areas here um, so the areas on the west and north side of that storm track and it would bring rainfall for the coast in those scenarios So areas like this would be more rainfall We will see some other circumstances likely where we will see nor'easters offshore It's been a couple of years since we've seen this being a consistent storm track And this is when we'd be watching for this pocket here for big time blizzards So that is going to be on high alert this year uh, because we do see frequent nor'easters in El Nino years. These are when nor'easters happen the most. And as you know, nor'easters create some of the biggest blizzards in the East Coast. So when we have higher chances of nor'easters, 
we have higher chances of big time East Coast blizzards, and it's been quite a few years, so perhaps we're due for one. Uh, you could argue that for sure. We do have a second layer here as well, and that's going to be, again, for these coastal areas, because whether the storm is tracking inland or if it's tracking kind of up the coast, in either of these scenarios, we see a lot of precipitation for these areas. Uh, whereas these lighter green areas here on the kind of the outskirts, if we do see the coastal storm, they may not even see any impacts from it. So I hope that makes sense. The, the more coastal regions will get precipitation in either scenario. These further inland areas, it's only going to happen with that more inland storm track. So that is why there's a difference there in the layers. Let's just move right into the temperature forecast. We're just breezing straight through this. Uh, I like to be pretty direct. It's in the name, of course. We can see that there is some above average temperatures that we expect to set up over the west here. And this is going to be what's considered to be a positive PNA. I do expect a positive PNA to take place this winter for a majority of the winter time. And this leads towards a few things. We're not going to reveal that just yet because we're going to talk about it in a second. But what you need to know is that this means that there would be warmer temperatures for a lot of the east so definitely or warmer temperatures for a lot of the west that is uh, out here for washington oregon california nevada utah um, these areas would be very very warm and we do have a second layer of this and this is going to be pretty uh northwest that is that is where i expect the highest temperatures compared to normal and the reason being and why the southwest would not be experiencing this higher confidence area is because with those storms, you got to imagine a lot of cloudiness, a lot of precipitation is going to cool those temperatures down a little bit compared to the more dry northwest that we're expecting to have. When it's, you know, sunny, a lot drier than typical, you can expect it to be easier for warmer temperatures to prevail in these areas, whereas the stormy regions could be cooled due to the low, the low pressure, the cloudiness, no sun getting through. There's multiple factors there, but I do expect that this is what the West will look like. All right, now let's break down. I know you guys are so excited for this, probably the cooler areas. And as you can see, with this positive PNA set up just like this, upstream in the west because everything moves from west to east i always touch on that we can in, uh, anticipate cooler temperatures to dive southward into both the central and the eastern united states uh with this and, and likely this warmth will be stretching all the way up the western Cana canadian coast into alaska if you can imagine that with me we don't see it on the map here but we, we're just going to use our imagination uh, that is going to force a lot of that cold air to move around that warm air mass from the Arctic regions, and it's going to pour into the east because of how far north this warmth is going. It's basically going to have to expand southward in the eastern end of things. This is very classic, again, positive Pacific North American oscillation. That's what PNA is short for. Very classic of that type of a pattern, and this is what my analogs are all suggesting. We do have a second layer here, uh, as you can see. Further below normal temperatures for a lot of these areas in the Ohio Valley and the east here. As you can see, plenty of cooler temperatures taking place. And we do expect that these further north areas would be closer to the source of the cold, aka higher confidence in the cold, of course. Now, as we move into our third layer, yes, we, we are unlocking our third layer of below normal temperatures. As you guys know, I rarely break this one out. But we do see that there is even higher confidence for the Ohio Valley, Upper Midwest, and Great Lakes for below normal temperatures. I expect an extremely cold winter and brutal winter for these areas. This is very typical of a neutral or an El Nino winter. Um, again, the, the West, I, I'm highly confident in the precipitation pattern that we've alluded to. I'm very, very confident in this temperature pattern out West as well. And the West pretty much dictates what happens in the east. It all moves downstream that way. And this is what we really, really anticipate here at Direct Weather at this point. Now, we don't have a snowfall forecast for you guys today. We are gonna be doing that in the second winter forecast. So be on the lookout for that one in the coming weeks or even maybe a month from now or so. I wanna wait a little bit longer to give that one to you guys just because it is pretty early on, of course. I'm probably gonna get some comments about how early it is. So we aren't really breaking down those more aggressive maps yet. Uh, we're just going over the simple precipitation temperature pattern based on what we know right now. We are gonna unlock more later on. So be sure to subscribe. Uh, we are gonna be going over the overall forecast here though. Uh, so don't go away yet. I wanna talk about this, but 
Be sure to subscribe because there will be more on the way, of course. Now we're going to start in the west, very dry there in the northwest. Of course, we talked about that earlier on. Tons of storms in the southwest there, as you can see. Again, we touched on that a lot. Typical snow for the Rockies and Cascades. I put this every single year because it's going to be snowy. It's going to be cold. You guys are going to see hundreds of inches of snow, and nothing is going to change that. So I think that is really what the winter is going to be like overall for you guys every single year. Cold and snowy to the east of the Rockies uh, as we see a couple of storms move south of this area just like this. Uh, we could even see what I call a horseshoeing storm track. Maybe if it moves in a little bit further northward and then raises up in some scenarios. This creates really big snowfall opportunities for these areas when you see the storm track kind of curving around uh, there. So it moves just like that because... It, you know, it takes longer for the storm to make it around. I don't want to explain mathematics to you guys today, but, you know, this is longer than this, obviously. So if it's moving around, that is going to be hours and hours and hours of more snowfall uh, than if it wasn't doing that. So uh, that is really, really what we anticipate for these Rockies and east of the Rockies area to be possible at times. Polar vortex is going to be a big possibility this year. We went over the temperature pattern. You guys saw that. Uh, in this purple area, we do expect the polar vortex to potentially make an appearance this year, as it did last December, if you guys remember, with historic cold temperatures during Christmas. We could see some similar scenarios to that, even though we were in a La Nina, and now we're in an El Nino, so it would be for different reasons, but we do expect similar temperatures to be possible. Arctic blasts south of that polar vortex region, the polar vortex will not most likely will not move over this area directly, but you could see very, very cold temperatures as a result. Winter battle zone here in the pink, which what this means is, you know, there's going to be a lot of mixed scenarios, snowfall, rainfall, everything in between could be possible. Obviously, mostly rainfall for these areas, but there will be those storms that move through with ice, snow, rain, all in one storm. Very, very messy, and it's going to be a true battle of the winter precipitation. Uh, above average storms to the south of this area. Uh, again, we're going to have storms moving through the kind of Gulf states like this at times, and that is going to lead towards above average storms. And I didn't mention this here, but I'm going to mention it now. Above average severe weather for the wintertime as well, likely in El Nino's oftentimes as well. So that is going to be another impact to watch for. We do expect huge snowstorms to be possible here for the Appalachian Mountain Range and surrounding regions. Again, uh, there will be times where probably we see more coastal storms, whether they're massive or not. There, This would probably be more exclusive for this red area. But there will also be times where we see the storms cut through inland. And these would be the scenarios where it would be kind of like a nor'easter, but inland for these white regions. I do expect that to happen from time to time. And worst of winter, I expect along the east coast. They won't actually see the most snowfall out of anybody, but compared to what's typical... For everybody i think that this area is the most likely to see above average snowfall i know we didn't break down the snowfall forecast but this is the area that i expect above average snowfall to be the most possible i'm, I'm releasing that information early at least anyway i know this has been a long-winded forecast i'm always so excited to make this and i hope you guys were excited to watch it again be sure to check out the prestige weather in the description and pinned comment down below for the best one-on-one -on -one weather consulting i think we're like the first to do it in this type of a format so it's a really really cool thing uh so be sure to check that out subscribe for more videos just like this one again there is more winter forecasts on the way over the coming months we have a long way to go so be on the lookout for those you can even hit the bell icon so you never miss it because uh, it'll notify you if we do upload that so you won't miss it be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it leave a comment down below and i'll see you guys in the next video